Hello friends, welcome back to this video series on saluting women in history. To begin with, we all know freedom and independence are often used interchangeably and are synonymous to each other. But there exists difference between these two terms because independence is considered to be a broader one whereas freedom is narrower in nature. Freedom means the right of people to express their opinions publicly without governmental interference and pursue happiness without unnecessary external restrictions. Whereas independence is the ability to be free and it means that an individual can do something without depending on others. It is a condition of a person, nation, country or state in which its residents and population or some portion thereof exercise self-government and usually sovereignty over the territory. Since ancient times, our country is known for its sovereignty and popular in various aspects of polity and society. Ruled by different dynasties and empires, the culture of our land had reached its zenith with many glorious reigns under the rule of various monarchs. During the period of 17th century, the advent of the Europeans in India introduced tremendous changes and our nation began to lose its sovereignty. The East India Company officially started dictating India with the Regulating Act of 1773 and began to exploit the sons of the soil. The simmering discontent burst in the form of a violent storm in 1857 in the name of the Great Revolt which shook the British Empire in India to its very foundations. Thus, there arose a struggle for independence which dawned upon India and its people and it was won by its people in unprecedented ways. The struggle for independence makes an important chapter in the evolution of India as a free nation. Many people belong to different segments of the society had an honor to play a significant role in the freedom struggle of India. And amongst these great people, millions were women. Some were known and some unknown. We know Mahatma Gandhi, Bhagat Singh, Subhash Chandra Bose, Chandrasekhar Azad, Jawaharlal Nehru and many more freedom fighters who did not put a second thought to put the country before their lives but they were not alone as women walked shoulder to shoulder with men. Surprisingly, women led the front and emerged as game changers in the quest for independence. And it can be stated here that India has produced a large number of Ranis of Jhansi who have fought and sacrificed on every front of struggle, regaining their self-respect in the family of nations. The quote highlighted by Mahatma Gandhi has been shown in the clipping. With this background, this video will highlight the Indian women who fought with true spirit and undaunted courage in the roughest and toughest for national honor and independence and determines the fact how they had faced various tortures, exploitations and hardships to earn us freedom. We all will be wondering that how our women entered into the scene of freedom struggle. Yes. They had entered into the scene when most of the men freedom fighters were in prison. In addition, the undaunted call by Mahatma Gandhi to women, irrespective of their religion or region, was a turning point in the history of Indian freedom struggle. Gandhiji assured their husbands and fathers that these politically active women would not rebel against the family. As an outcome, the struggle for freedom had drawn many women into its arena and thus Gandhiji made the Indian freedom struggle as a mass movement. Further, women also got an opportunity to participate along with men freedom fighters and contributed their might entering into politics and public life which were so far the exclusive domains of men folk. The list of great women whose names have gone down in history for their dedication and undying devotion to the service of the motherland is a long one. For the sake of understanding, this video has been planned to trace the role of women in freedom struggle into six phases such as before 20th century, Swadeshi movement, non-cooperation movement, revolutionary movement, civil disobedience movement and quit India movement. By identifying these phases, let us thus remember some of the greatest women of our country. Indian freedom struggle got started towards the end of the 20th century, but the seed for the same was laid beforehand and particularly the saga of women's participation participation in Indian freedom struggle began in the year 1817 when Bhima Bai Holkar fought bravely with the British Colonel Malcolm and defeated him in guerrilla warfare. In 1824, Rani Chennamma of Kittur bravely resisted the armed might of the East India Company. It was followed by Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi, the great heroine of the first war of India's freedom. She showed the embodiment of patriotism, self-respect and heroism. Rani Lakshmi Bai was the queen of a small state but the empress of a limitless empire of glory since she has blazed a trial by giving her life in 1858. 
Rani Ramgarh, who became the fountain head of the revolt in Mandala district during July 1857, met death in the battlefield. The banner of revolt was raised in Lucknow on 30th May 1857. The revolution spread rapidly to the other towns of Oud and the rebels were successful in establishing their authority in many places one after another. Begum Azrat Mahal of Oud, the region queen who exercised all the authority, ruled the state diplomatically and exhibited qualities of good leadership and statesmanship. She fought against the British East India Company very courageously. The other women leaders of the revolt outbreak were Rani Tezbai, Rani Jindan, Baizabai, Chauhan Rani, Devi Chandrani, Pandi Queen, Rani of Tulsipur, Zinat Mahal, Tapaswini Maharani and many others. They led troops to the battlefield and fought while others accepted sufferings and privations, imprisonment and death. And it is important to highlight here that the part played by the women in the War of Independence of 1857 was creditable and invited admiration even from the english for instance sir hugh rose observed rani of jhansi as the bravest and best military leader of the rebels and rasul says that begum hazrat mahal has excited all out after the revolt of 1857 our national movement was raised with the influencing factors such as social reform and education programs started by various social reformers of indian renaissance the women pioneer of renaissance came from all sections of the society and they have truly represented the wave of change which swept the masses among them the literate educationist and housewives of the social reformers turned as crusaders of struggle by this time mankin chandra chatopadhyas emotional hymn bande mataram which linked idealized womanhood with nationalism became famous throughout India. The foundation of Indian National Congress in 1885 by Alan Octavian Hume turned as the official launch of the Indian freedom struggle. In 1889, 10 women attended the annual meetings of the Indian National Congress. From this time onwards, women attended every meeting of the Congress, sometimes as delegates and sometimes as observers. A chorus of 56 girls from all regions of India performed the song Hindustan in 1901. Thus, the participation of women existed in the early history of the indian national congress itself coming to the phase of the swadeshi movement the agitation against the partition of bengal in 1905 and the swadeshi movement attracted the attention of women in many parts of india women joined men in protesting against the british by boycotting foreign goods and buying only swadeshi goods few women took a vow to devote themselves to the motherland every day they had set aside a handful of rice for the sacred cause generally speaking the bengali women sang in praise of mother india sarala devi choudhrani of the tagore family sister nivedita and mrs esubai savarkar took active participation in the swadeshi movement the rowlatt acts were passed at the beginning of 1919 prohibiting public protest and suspended civil liberties this was when gandhi ji began to develop a program for women on 6th april 1919 he addressed a meeting of women of all classes and communities and urged them to take the swadeshi vow to give up foreign goods and spin every day As an outcome some women began to play a very active role in the swadeshi movement such as Sarojini Naidu Annie Besant Urmila Devi Durga Bai Deshmukh Ambu Jamal Bibi Amma Basanti Devi and Krishna Bai Ram The entry of these women into active political nationalist movement marked the beginning of a new era in Indian freedom struggle. It is important to mention here the contribution and services of Annie Besant, an Irish lady who entered the Indian political field in 1914. She was a wonderful orator and writer of great charm and force. Annie Besant advocated for the boycott of foreign goods, temperance, national education, swadeshi, labor welfare and responsible government. She also raised the slogan of Swaraj and succeeded in bringing Lokmanya Tilak and his associates who had resigned from the Congress after Surat split back into Congress in 1916. Her popularity as national leader can be gauged from the fact that the Congress elected her to preside over its Calcutta session in 1917. Annie Besant described the Montford schemes as disappointing and unworthy of England to offer and India to accept. Thus, she acted as a tireless worker for India's good and welfare of the people. Gandhi ji launched the non-cooperation movement against the British during the 1920s and women of educated and liberal families as well as those from the rural areas actively joined him in his non-violent movement. The movement began with members of the reform councils withdrawing from these councils and during the period of this movement Gandhi ji promised a more active role for women. The next step of the movement was to boycott the law courts and schools. Therefore the Indian National Congress declared 
6th to 13th April 1921 as Satyagraha week. As a result, women interested in politics held meetings to show their support. Sarojini Naidu with other women decided to form their own political organization called Rashtriya Sri Sangha, which is an independent women's organization. Speaking to this group in August 1921, Urmila Devi, the widowed sister of C.R. Das, urged women to leave their homes and participate in the non-cooperation movement. Therefore, 1,000 women demonstrated in Bombay against the visit of Prince of Wales to India in November 1921. In Bengal, C.R. Das asked Congress volunteers to sell Kadar on the streets of Calcutta, which resulted in the arrest of the first batch of volunteers. Then, Basanti Devi, wife of C.R. Das, Urmila Devi, sister of C.R. Das, and Miss Suniti Devi, niece of C.R. Das, took to the streets and they were also arrested. When protests were mounting for the arrest, they were released. Gandhiji immediately recognized the value of having women to form picket lines. Writing in Young India, he urged women from other parts of the country to follow the brave example of the Bengali women. The arrest of respectable women in Bengal produced somewhat better results. At the All India Ladies Conference in Ahmedabad, 6,000 women listened to B. Amma, the mother of Ali brothers, who urged women to enlist themselves as Congress volunteers. She also told them that if their menfolk were arrested, they should join the picket lines. Gandhiji's message touched the hearts of various segments of women folk, including the middle class women. In the East Godavari district, a group of women gathered to meet and listen to Gandhiji and Srimati Duguri Subama of the region joined the freedom struggle. Durga Bai, a 12-year-old girl, later the most popular Durga Bai Deshmukh, met Gandhiji in April 1921 along with 1,000 women at Kakinada and expressed her firm willingness to support Gandhiji. He spoke to these women for over an hour with Durga Bai doing the translation of what he spoke. The women listening to Gandhiji took off their jewellery and added another rupees 20,000 to the purse of Gandhi for the expenses towards the struggle. At the same time, another important event took place, that is, women's organizations were petitioning the British government for women's franchise due to the efforts of Sarala Devi Chaudhrani, Mutalakshmi Reddy and Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, a member of the Auluwalia royal family of Kapurthala state, served as Gandhi's secretary for 16 long years and she was a great admirer of Gandhi for his fight towards justice. Sushila Nair, Gandhiji's medical doctor, was a Gandhian ever since 1919 and it is interesting to note here that it was Sushila Nair's mother who called Gandhiji as Mahatma, that is the great soul. The women from Motilal Nehru's family, namely Swaruprani, and Lado Rani Zushi became great supporters of Gandhiji and they played an important role in Congress activities. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, sister of Jarala Nehru, began to establish a sway into non-cooperation movement and thus came to the forefront of the Indian political sphere. With all these facts highlighted, women's rise to prominence over the tide of nationalism became the order of the day during the period of non-cooperation movement. A new kind of women's participation was developing in 1920s with their involvement in direct action as they even entered into the revolutionary context of the national movement. The center of women's revolutionary movement was Chittagong in Bengal where a group of revolutionaries had formed in the form of a Chittagong Ormary raid in 1930. Historian Sumit Sarkar states the impact of the raid on women as recruits poured into the various groups in a steady stream and the romantic appeal of the raid attracted into the fold of the terrorist party women and young girls who form this onward or found assisting the terrorists as housekeepers, messengers, custodians of arms and sometimes as comrades. The Chittagong Ormary raid resulted in the death of many women revolutionaries and the group decided to take revenge by killing the commissioner of police. Anuja Sen was one of the women who was instructed to bomb his car. She died on the spot as the bomb exploded when she hurled it. Another woman was one of the three revolutionaries arrested at a place, Sarish Bari, with the explosive materials which they were taking from Calcutta to Maimen Singh. In spite of the stern actions from the British government, terrorist activities continued and more number of young women joined the revolutionary groups or engaged in a direct action of their own. 
These can be highlighted by the activities of women revolutionaries. In 1931, two girls, Shanti Ghosh and Suniti Chaudhary, shot the district magistrate, Mr. Stevens, who was set to take advantage of the government promulgations to harass young women in the hilly tracks of Bengal and were exploited by the British officials by misusing their authority. Dina Das was sentenced for life because she was involved in the transportation for attempting to shoot the governor of Bengal, Sir Stanley Jackson. Kamala Das was another revolutionary who moved into a hostel for storing the bombs. Preeti Lita Vadedar joined revolutionary nationalist groups at college and learned how to wield lathis and swords. She had been inspired by Bankim Chandra and Sarat Chandra in her adolescence, reading their novels and resolved to give their lives for the country. Thus, people were convinced for the first time that Indian women were equal to men in their activities towards the nationalist struggle. The failure of the British government to take up the Nehru report and to take note of the demands of the people within the stipulated period forced the Indian National Congress to proceed with its plans of launching Satyagraha as had been decided at its Calcutta session of December 1928. Gandhiji was empowered to initiate the civil disobedience movement of 1930-32 with the best effort of what he considers and he selected the breaking of salt laws as the centre of activity since the salt tax was unjust for the poor in the land. In spite of the reluctance of Gandhiji, women's participation in the civil disobedience movement was impressive as compared to the early 1920s. Women's picketing and demonstrations from 1930 to 32 in Bombay received more press attention and thousands of women were marching in the pickets organized by them. The women's political organization, the Rashtriya Sri Sangha, had remained under the leadership of Sarojini Naidu with its stated goal of women's emancipation. In addition, a new and smaller organization, the Desh Shevika Sangha, that is the women serving the country, also came into existence. During the famous Dandi March, women were very much involved and gathered in thousands at every stopped to hear the speeches of Gandhiji. When the International Congress decided to choose the date of 6th April, which was happened to be the anniversary of Jalian Wallabad massacre, for the formal breaking of the salt laws, a front line of seven people, including two women, Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay and Avantika Bai Gokhale, were the first to step on to the beach, light fires and boil sea water. Women volunteers picketed toddy shops and asked foreigners to close their doors and patrons to leave the premises. Other women sold salt on the streets, while still others went house to house, urging housewives to buy only Swadeshi products. Goshiben Captain, one of the granddaughters of Dada by Navroji, was also an active participant in the civil disobedience movement. Sarojini Naidu was nominated by the International Congress to lead the raid on the Darshana Salt Works, and accordingly, on 15 May 1930, she directed the protest. But on the same day she was arrested but released and her presence was symbolic both for Indian nationalists and British authorities. Again on 21st May 1930, Sarojini Naidu led the second batch of raiders but got arrested again. This time she was sentenced to one year's imprisonment but her leadership inspired hundreds of women. As an outcome, the Desh Shevikas propagated the message Swadeshi celebration and independence. The merchants of Bombay, faced with women picketing their shops, signed the pledge not to sell foreign cloth. They were on the streets joining men for flag raisings and demonstrations. On 23rd June 1930, the police ordered Congress volunteers to leave the esplanade, but the volunteers refused. As the police advanced, the women moved forward to shield men and were injured when the police charged the crowds. The Desh Shevikas organized a number of demonstrations that grabbed headlines and inspired women all over India. Among them, the famous women leaders from Bombay included Leelawati Munshi, Perin Captain and Lukhanji. Women from Calcutta made and sold salt, picketed cloth and liquor shops, preached the value of Qadar and took procession into the streets. The civil disobedience movement took deep-rooted in district towns and villages and women joined processions wore Qadar and hid fleeing revolutionaries. Another important highlight is that the Oxford scholar Latika Ghosh Mahila Rashtriya Sangh was formed in 1928 and it started to fulfill Shubhash Chandra Bose's desire for Swaraj through the active involvement of women. Shubhash Chandra Bose was very much impressed by the talents of Latika Ghosh. The Mahila Rashtriya Sangh organized a vigorous demonstration against the Simon Commission in order to achieve Swaraj and improve women's status. Thus, in 1928, Subhash Chandra Bose actively engaged both men and women in freedom struggle in the inaugural annual Congress meeting in Calcutta. 
and made uniformed women volunteers and men to march in the procession latika ghosh enlisted 300 women students from bethun college and victoria institutions along with the teachers employed by the calcutta corporation their uniforms consisted of dark green sari with red borders worn over white blouses which was the color of the congress flag in addition to mahila rashtriya sang nari satyagraha samiti came into existence during 1929 in response to the congress call for women urmila devi became its president jyoti moy ganguli held the rank of the vice president and two other women namely shanti das and bimal pratipa devi were the joint secretaries of the organization this group had a core of 15 to 20 women who were willing to picket and risk arrest They chose white color sarees as their uniform. Santi Das was a teacher who had set up her own school and she recruited her students and Calcutta Corporation teachers to this organization. Majority of women who became involved with the revolutionary groups during this time were students. They joined secret societies and were having previous experience by working in women's organizations and the Congress party. Bina Das, the young college student who fired a pistol at Governor Jackson, was said to be the famous revolutionary woman. The Chhatri Sangha and Association for Female Students was also organized and the Congress looked for recruits from this association. When Gandhi ji called for civil disobedience movement in 1930, Kalyani led the Chhatri Sangha girls in a demonstration. When Nehru was arrested, these young women offered mounting protest. In September 1931, Kalyani was arrested for addressing a meeting at Hazra Park and proved that women could be as brave as men. Another important point to be mentioned here is that in rural areas also there were many accounts of their bravery. Sarala Devi acknowledged men's role in bringing women into the freedom movement. She said that there was no need to form a separate women's congress. Women from Allahabad, Lucknow, Delhi and Lahore joined in the movement and, and as many as 1000 women have participated in the public demonstrations. Leadership of women came from the families of Nehru's and Jutchis. In Allahabad, women from the Nehru family were important leaders. They made public speeches and went door to door urging women to join the movement. Swarup Rani, Jawaharlal Nehru's mother, wore kadar and walked in the streets. Kamala Nehru was constantly on the move organizing demonstrations in Allahabad, speaking in Lucknow and traveling to Bombay. She asked women to take the vow of Swadeshi and wear kadar. According to her, If women were united the rebellion could never be crushed in Lahore Ladorani Jushi wife of Motilal Nehru's nephew and three of her daughters led the civil disobedience movement one of the daughters by name Manmohini chaired the students reception committee welcoming Subhash Chandra Bose to preside over the second all Punjab student conference she was a student at Garment Arts College for men served as volunteer at the Lahore Congress and also became the first woman president of the Lahore Students Union Gen- Generally speaking, women's demonstrations in Delhi had a greater impact on men. For instance, Satyavadi Devi, the granddaughter of Swami Shraddhanan, became an important woman leader. Since her speeches were inflammatory, the British authorities quickly arrested and imprisoned her. She was released, re-arrested and finally subjected to two years of imprisonment in 1932. On another occasion, Delhi women dressed in red sarees and blocked access to the court and it is commendable that Vijay Lakshmi Pandit worked for many years with the women's organizations in Delhi. Amba Bai, a woman of Karnataka, widowed at the age of 16, joined in picketing foreign cloth and toddy shops in UDP. She was arrested and sentenced to four months in prison, released and re-arrested. Between these prison terms, she made speeches and taught spinning to women and as a result, it had a good impact upon women at the grassroots revel in Karnataka. So it can be very well stated that the participation of women in freedom movement also shaped the movement for women's rights. Women won great respect for their political work and the unflinching dedication of women in the civil disobedience movement has remained eternally praised in the pages of history. Coming to the final stage of the freedom struggle that is the Quit India movement phase the year 1939 witnessed the beginning of the second world war in Europe Lord Linlithgow the then governor general of India proclaimed India to be at war with Germany the congress ministries in office were not consulted and as a mark of protest they resigned the quit india resolution taken against the british directly addressed women as disciplined soldiers of indian freedom required to sustain the flame of war usha mehta a committed patriot set up a radio transmitter 
called the voice of freedom to disseminate the mantra of freedom war news of protest and arrest deeds of young nationalist and gandhi's famous do or die message for the quit india movement were circulated amongst the masses usha mehta and her brother persisted with their task of broadcasting until their arrest many women from assam took a predominant part in the quit india movement and it was on 20th september 1942 Kanaklata Barua a girl in her teens marched towards Gohapon Thana at the head of 500 people to occupy the Thana building she was asked to leave the premises but she did not Rajkumari Amrit Kaur was the most popular woman during the Quit India movement and she led processions day after day one such procession was subjected to ruthless lathi charge in Shimla and she remained interned for 20 months and she lost even a brother while in jail These acts proved that the British could maintain the empire only at enormous cost due to widespread agitation. Following the policy of individual satyagraha launched by Gandhi ji, Amar Kaur offered satyagraha at Kasu Lahur district and organized women's training camps in Lahur and Amritsar for which she was arrested. The women congress workers of Sindh region who took out processions in 1942 were abused and taken away to four of places and released in the midnight. Anusia Bai Khale took active part in the Quit India movement and Sarojini Naidu the fame of Darshana Shal trades became active again during this movement. She was arrested on 3rd December 1940 for taking part in the individual satyagraha inaugurated by Vinoba Bhave out of which she fell ill and had to be released on 11th December 1940. Usha Mehta daughter of a judge also took part in the Quit India movement and organized a secret radio station in the outskirts of Bombay and kept the people informed about the struggle. Lady Abdul Kader the wife of Justice Abdul Kader of Punjab was a well-known nationalist who took keen interest in women's education and brought out the muslim women to social service during the quit india movement the students from karnataka took active part in which the share of the girl students in these activities was by no means very small the government dealt with agitators and law defying students with lathi blows and indiscriminate beatings 32 girls were severely beaten at Kumda Adoni. In 1943, a women's wing of the Indian National Congress was started with Suchita Kripalani as secretary in charge. She issued circulars to the Pradesh Committee in order to organize women's wing effectively. Emerging from the underground in 1946, Arna Asaf Ali, with the halo of a national leader, was elected as the president of the Delhi Pradesh Congress Committee in 1947. With all these events highlighted we have attained the independence on 15th August 1947 and India was got freed from the clutches of the British rule which ended the freedom movement of India to conclude it can be stated here that the list of women can go on as one woman after the other made her individual as well as a collective mark on the independence movement however along with the bright stars in the freedom struggle there were also many nameless women who have in their own way contributed to the movement women as messengers as supporters as wives and mothers and as leaders were also an integral part of the independence movement these were ordinary women from all walks of life who managed to make extraordinary contributions to the cause of freedom thus the heroines of india's past laid the foundation of a nation and thanks to thousands and thousands of our mothers and sisters who took part bravely and acted as change makers as india celebrates 74 years of independence I am extremely happy and proud to honor the lives and exemplary work of these women by paying this visual tribute and registering my big salute in history. Thank you for watching. Please like share and subscribe to this channel